Hello, F5 community. Uh, welcome to Dev Central Connects. We are going to be talking with our buddy Gary New today and, uh, and finding out a little bit more about him and the OneWAF project that he's working on. But before we even start, Gary, what is that flashing blinking lights behind you? <laughs> that is my Picade. Oh my that goodness. is yeah yeah so it's um it's the cabinet it's a it's an arcade one up street fighter 2 cabinet as you can see with all the decals on it and it's, and it's really cool um but when i got it um i replaced the motherboard with a raspberry pi 4 um and replaced all the buttons and, and the joystick to just better quality ones and now i've got about i'm gonna say maybe eight thousand games on it with about you know 20 or so different systems arcade systems there's a Dreamcast on there, PlayStation, PSX, Atari 2600, Super Famicom for wow. our Japanese friends, <laughs> Turbo Graphics, um, everything is on it. It's awesome. It's just there's so much stuff to play. <clears throat> so have you have you done much with Raspberry Pi beyond this, or is this kind of your first foray into Raspberry uh, Pi? I've got a lot of them around my house, so I've got <laughs> one of them in my. I, I call it my communications closet. It's actually the, the coat closet where we put all our jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that running, yeah, running pie hole and an internet monitoring kind of thing um, on Docker. I've got um, one behind me here. No, actually, over here running my Wi-Fi management. I've got you know, yeah, Ubiquity Wi-Fi stuff, so that's running the management server on that. Um, yeah, I've, I have another one on the shelf over there that is actually a portable arcade. So it's, it's, it, it's got a screen on the front of it and the Raspberry Pi sticks in the back of it and it's got a little stand. So when we go home to Ireland at Christmas, I just bring it with me and we got two little kind of those um, like Nintendo-like pads that you can play with. That's super cool. But yeah, you know, um, actually, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself as well? How long have you been with F5 and, uh, and what, uh, what is it that you do for F5 just to give these, uh, these viewers and, and sure. community members some context? Yeah, so I've been with F5 for about just over 15 years. Um, I started out life at F5. Sorry, my, my dog is here. Here say hello. Oh, we love dogs. That's all right. Yeah, can't get him in the camera. Yeah, move the camera anyway. See, That's Seamus. Oh, Seamus, <laughs> like the Pink Floyd song. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so, yeah. So I started out as, as an SE um, at F5 back in Ireland. Um, we moved to the UK and I started working with the SE team over there and did some uh, ran an SE team down in Africa as well, which was fun. Um, wow. And six years ago, we moved here to Seattle. I'm in Seattle at the moment and ran a few, uh, worked with a few SE teams across North America. Um, but now I'm just, uh, for the last year, I've moved to the, to the distributed cloud um, team uh, where I'm building out a new function called field product management. Uh, and that's quite interesting because it's it's kind of a group of product managers. Right now we've got one in every theater, so one in Europe, one in North America, and one in um, APCJ based in Singapore. Um, and their goal is to help customers adopt new products and um, to kind of help the field, um, our sellers with roadmaps and information like that. And just to try to get better communication between all of the teams because it, it, Distributed cloud and the way we build and the way we develop is quite different. Um, it's much more agile than traditional big IP development, and it's not a knock to big IP development. It's just big IP development is huge. Oh, um, they're different. So, it, you know, you, you just have to manage it differently um, in terms of adding features and stuff like that. But in distributed cloud, because we're so agile, um, you know, we, we want to make sure we get that word out very, very quickly and, and get feedback from customers very quickly. So that's what my team is, is, is trying to do. So, yeah. yeah. The, what, Tell us about OneWAF, what it is, and what uh, what what is yeah. the kind of the end game for OneWAF. What is that going to do for our user community? Yeah, so it, it's initiative. It's an initiative that we kicked off um, within the company because you know we have we have multiple different WAF web application firewall solutions. Um, as you know, we got Big IP Advanced WAF um, and Big IP Next WAF are the solutions that run on our Big IP hardware in, or in virtual editions. We've got Nginx App Protect, which is the, the lightweight app that sits inside Nginx. And recently in February, actually, we launched um, Distributed Cloud WAP, so Web Application and API Protection, which includes a WAF. It also includes API security and bot mitigation as well, but that includes a, a WAF too. And what we have then are actually three separate products, effectively. Now, what we did in the background was 
we actually took the engine from Advanced WAF, so the big IP engine that we've used and is known and trusted for the last two decades, because that's how long we've been doing web application forwarding. I did some research. 2004 is when we acquired um, Magnifier, which was the company that gave us uh, ASM. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's nearly two decades. So we've been doing this for a long time. But we've taken that engine um, and put that in Nginx. So Nginx App Protect uses the same engine, the same core. And Distributed Cloud also uses the same engine and the same core. So what we have now is three separate WAF deployments that all use the same engine. Now, there are different features on different ones, which is okay. Okay, because if you were using Big IP as an example, you might want to use hardware and to use it on hardware, high performance hardware, there's different requirements and different things you need to do. Whereas if you want to use the Nginx App Protect, you're probably going on a pair app deployment. Maybe you're building it into your development pipeline um, or maybe you're using it with containers because it's very lightweight and it's container native as well as you know. Or if it's distributed cloud WAP or WAF, um, you can use it as a service and that's kind of a set and forget. So there's machine learning, um, in that that actually looks at applications and, and kind of builds policies and new um, um, mitigations in real time as well. So you can see we've got the, the same engine and we can deploy it in multiple different ways. Now, what OneWAP is, is trying to pull all those together in a number of ways. One, put it together in a cohesive um, story to the market, okay, that it makes sense. And the second thing is how do we merge the, the kind of management of these things. How do we make it so you can push a policy that you have running in your data center on your big IP, use that same policy on Nginx, App Protect, and the same policy on distributed cloud? And th that's really what the whole initiative is about. Okay. And so uh, if, if a customer were to uh, want to, uh, this is actually selfish here of me, <laughs> but if a customer were to want to use all three, um, mm -hmm. One of those one of those things that I, I talked to when uh, my customers about when I was a, an SE uh, was you know hey some of the best the best you know practice that we we can offer here is to have a cloud based WAF as well as an edge WAF and then um, I, I also had some customers that utilized Nginx App Protect almost like a RASP right on yeah. the uh, application server itself. Um, but, you know, we're finding that more and more customers want to use a uh, three-tiered or multi-tiered mm -hmm. WAF approach today. Um, so mm -hmm. they would be able to do that, that kind of thing with, uh, with this project as yeah. well, yeah? I mean, wh 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 when you look at it, applications are multi-tiered, multi-pronged, whatever word we want to call it, right? You, you could have one app, like let's say, for example, I'm on, let's take just a random application like Best Buy, okay? I don't know how their application works, but I'm just gonna use it as an example. When I click on the Best Buy and I look for something, maybe I'm looking for a new camera, okay? I can go in and see in the camera. I can see straight away if that's available in my store or how long it will take to be delivered to me. Now, chances are, I'm just gonna, hypothetically, that application is gonna be made up of multiple different components or microservices. We all know what microservices are. Some right. of those services might sit in the data center where my customer data might be stored. That's in control of, of, of the company, as an example. The delivery thing has to know where I'm located. It probably has to talk to UPS or FedEx, whoever the delivery partner for, for Best Buy is, to get that information to know how long or how quickly it'll take to get delivered to my place. The um, images could be served by a CDN for performance reasons. And there you have in one mobile app that you're using, you've got three different deployment and delivery methods for your application, okay? Yeah. So if you want to deploy security in that, one type is not gonna work. So you could put a big IP and everything, and of course it'll work, it'll provide security, but it's not optimal, okay? So what we're, what we're looking at then is with OneWAF, because your applications are so distributed and diverse, your implementation of security should be the same. So then if you, if, you, if you follow that example through for the kind of microservice lightweight deployment, you could use Nginx. For the CDN security part of it, you could use distributed cloud WAP. And maybe for the core on-prem data center stuff where probably those requests are gonna be pretty heavy because you're getting customer data, you're getting credit card information, you're getting recent purchases and everything like that. Um, and you may not want to share your private keys with anyone for, for that yeah. type of information. You can use your big IP or your virtual edition, or you just want the high performance hardware. Um, so right now you can do that, but what you can't do is take the same controls that you would implement in your big IP and push into Nginx and um, distributed cloud WAP. And from anyone who's building security, 
you know, if you're building security policy, as you know, and everyone knows, you, you look at the risk, you build your controls, but then how can you be sure that the controls are working in the different deployments? And that's what we're trying to pull together. Okay, well, that, that brings some clarity, I guess. Uh, and as far as the, the API is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, are, are they, they're not same APIs today, correct? They're not the same APIs today, but there is a broader initiative within F5 to try and um, not to try to pull the APIs together. Again, it's not going to be a single API, but there will be a single declarative interface that will sit in front of all of the APIs that will make it easier for customers. And this is what we're going to leverage. So right now, um, there is an open source tool called uh, Waffler. Um, you can share the URL. Um, yep. And, and that, that basically allows, um, it does some policy translation. So if you create a policy or put a big IP advanced WAF policy, it will allow you to translate it into an Nginx policy, okay? That's forming the basis of our first kind of real policy, official policy translation engine that is going to be available in probably about six months, I'd say, that customers then can kind of get these policies and they'll take the policy down, then they can push it out to different instances of Nginx or XE WAF or whatever it happens to be. The next phase in that then is this kind of like, like, like you mentioned, the API layer, where we create a common declarative framework that sits in front of all these WAFs. So then you push a security policy and it just goes to whatever endpoints you have. And this declarative layer then is able to translate between, well, this is what Nginx needs. This is what distributed cloud needs. And this is what, you know, AS3 needs for, for advanced WAF. That's exciting stuff. Honestly, yeah. I, 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 knowing, knowing that we now have kind of the, the ability to do uh, ASM via distributed cloud now, it's, it's very exciting to me uh, because it seems as though everything in distributed cloud that I've worked with anyways always is, is Nginx or Nginx Plus backends. Yeah. So it would, it would kind of appear that we would be able to, to really, I, I guess, um, you know, put one WAF into place in the distributed cloud right up front uh, as a as kind of a command center. That That's so exciting to me. Yeah. No, no, you're, you're right. I mean, I, I, I'm i not sure we'll ever get to the day where we'll have kind of one manager of managers that sits in front of it because I don't think many people really ask for that. I mean, people might think they want it, but when it comes down to it, how many managers of managers do you have, right? Do you have one just for F5 and then one for FireEye and then one for everything else? I mean, it becomes untenable. But with oh, yeah. the kind of... The, the acquisitions that we've made with Shape Security and with um, ThreatStack. So some of the IP that came with those acquisitions was some really, really advanced machine learning algorithms that are able to detect threats very quickly on huge volumes of data. The Shape part of it looks at kind of the user behavior and how users interact with the application. And the ThreatStack part of it looks at kind of how the application is delivered. So what, what are the processes doing? Is there any rogue processes? Is a process kind of you know, taking longer than usual because someone has kind of sent uh, uh, the information, someone has tried to execute a buffer overflow on it and it's kind of taken some time to do it. So being able to take all that information and process all that data really quickly and come up with, you know, um, insights and, and um, analysis, that's the goal of what we're building then ultimately with distributed cloud. Um, and then customers will be able to put their advanced WAF Nginx and maybe, maybe some other stuff I don't know yet into that. And we'll be able to give them kind of real time insights uh, based on everything that we've seen, not only on security, but on performance, on availability, and be able to you know, provide customers to say, hey, look, this application is going slowly because your database is slow, or this application is going slowly because there's some extra latency in AWS, you know, US East right now for this particular service, and then customers can react an awful lot quicker. So you're saying we'll be able to deliver analytics. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I would say be able to deliver adaptive applications. Even better, <laughs> even better. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And I mean, analytics, it's, it's such a mature market right now. So it's really not, there's no, there's no kind of value for us just to say, hey, we've got a new analytics platform. But yeah, true. because, you know, people watching this who, who know F5 know we sit in the data plane of applications that we do. So we actually have more insights than a lot of people have and a lot of, um, you know, that, than, than a lot of people can see and a lot of vendors can see. So being able to help our customers leverage that is really what we want to do, leverage the insights that are already there. We, we've made some strides, you know, back in, I don't know, was it seven years ago with AVR when we released AVR on Big IP? They yeah, gave some, yeah. It gave some nice, you know, there was some, some good stuff there, but there's so much data we, 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 we can potentially gather and use. Um, and 
let me just preface that when we say gather and use we're not going to gather people's information we're not going to suddenly contact all the big ips and say send us all your information this is 100 percent opt-in like our the, one of the things that we do as a company is is our customers privacy first oh yeah you know so we've no interest in kind of trying to take data and use it for anything at all if 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 we work with our customers data it is the customers for the customer's benefit and that's, and that's solely what it is you know, that's one of those things about distributed cloud that excited me probably the most was looking at the actionable data that it delivers to you just from being yeah. in the in the data path. It, as you say, it's exciting. It is. No, it is really exciting. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun time here at F5. It really is. I mean, the, 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 the technology we're working on, the, the customers we get to work with, the, the, the colleagues we get to work with. I mean, it's it, it's pretty awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. The culture is exciting. The technology is exciting. I'm, I'm psyched to be at F5 and I think you are too. <laughs> I mean, 15 years later, I mean, I'm still here, right? Something, ha either I'm doing something right or the company's doing something right. So let's say the company's doing something. No, I'm doing something right. So they haven't fired me yet. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, so any, uh, any parting thoughts before we kind of wrap up here? Look, I, I, I just think there, there's going to be some lots of exciting stuff coming. Um, and, and I mean that as, as a technologist, not as someone who's kind of, you know, sh shouting from the rooftops about F5. Um, there genuinely is, I think there's, a, everything we've done has been really thoughtful um, with Shape and Threadstack and Volterra and all of that stuff coming together. So I just think that the sky's the limit, honestly, and I'm really, really excited. So let's hope as we get more stuff out, we can do more you know, talks like this and we can get, get to get the word out to people. Absolutely. That's the intent. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming on today, Gary. I'm uh, uh, excited as always to talk to you uh, and I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Brilliant. Thanks for having me.